Hey everyone, this is Yikes here. Welcome to a complete Barrows Guide for the 2007 servers. Barrows is a minigame where you can reap huge rewards and profits if done correctly. This is an all-round guide for beginners and advanced players and I will be making many, many more guides and videos on the 07 servers. So if you do like this, subscribe if you want to be in on the action. Let us begin. Alright, so into the requirements, as there isn't really too many. This can be done with an extremely low statted account and don't be afraid if you are a one defense pew because this can be done quite easily still. These are just my recommended requirements. So 50 magic. This is for magic dart with 55 slayer of course. And you know it isn't really a, a must. You can do it with 35 magic but you do want to save on prayer pots by killing the brothers faster. Charge with claws of guthix would definitely be my uh, preferred method. But, um, hitting, hitting 30s is quite, uh, quite hectic. So 50 range. For magic shortbow, as you probably won't hit much uh, below that on arms using like a U shortbow or whatever, you do really need to use rune, rune arrows so you hit quite high. 40 defense is just a nice to have, uh, just so you don't get owned in the tunnels using rune armor. And 43 prayer for protection prayers is a must, <laughs> unless you are planning on freezing or binding or safe spotting the brothers. Uh, priest and prayer is, is the base requirement to get into barrage. You do have to have that done, so that does get prayer experience, so you can't do this with a, a one prayer pure account. And uh, nature spirits in search of Miracu, in aid of Miracu, are all bonuses that are make the make the banking faster. And do not forget a spade. You need this to dig into the mounds. All right, so now I'll talk about how to get there. Now, as you can see in this map here, Route 1 requires Priest in Peril, which is the base requirement to get there. You start at the Cannabis Bank, or you can start in the Varrock Bank as you go through and get your prayer from the temple. You start on the green line there, you go through the swamps, go down the little squiggly line at the bottom, go through Morton, and you get to the point where all of the paths meet up, and then you just go a little bit further to the east, and you're at Barrows. Alright, for Route 2, the pink route, you need Priest in Peril and Nature Spirit. So you go pretty much the same, the same way until you get to the gate, and then you go along the, the water's edge kind of thing, until you get down to the boat. Board the boat, and you'll be at the ending spot near Morton. Then go a little bit east and you'll be at Barrows. For Route 3, my recommended route, which is the one that I take and is awesome, pretty much the best one, <laughs> um, you need to have Priest in Peril, Nature Spirit, and In Search of Miracu. So you start at Canifus and you go just behind the pub, there is a trapdoor, you go down that, and then you travel south through that, uh, through that little cave, I guess you'd call it, and then you come out uh, where the line starts again on the map. So then you go a little bit south, you go over the uh, little bridge, which is quite uh, quite annoying, I guess, um, at first, because you've got to click on the boards one at a time, but you get used to it and you'll be able to go across them pretty fast. And then once you get across that, you go south to the boats, and you're at the same place as all the other methods. Uh, you go east a little bit, and you're at the barrows. The last little thing I'd like to say is on the red line, there is actually a bank in Berta Rot. Now, you need Priest in Peril, Nature Spirit, In Search of Miracu, and In Aid of Miracu to get access to this bank. Now, it is quite useful. I do often, I use it sometimes, like it's not always. Most of the time, I just use my uh, Ectophile and teleport back up to Ectophungus and then walk back to Canifus, but it is another option. It uh, just means that you have to walk out of the caves or tunnels on the, uh, on the last chest that you do. Now for this next part, I'll be talking about the best order to do the brothers. Now it isn't necessarily the best way to do them, this is all personal preference. Some people might go uh, do the harder ones like Varak first, but I do it in a, uh, a logical order. So starting at the northeast corner is Darok. Now you need to dig down to get to it and then you kill it and you'll come back up by the ladder. But I'll show you all that later. Then you go to Aram, which is the, the middle brother. You go to Kara, which is directly south. To Guthans, which is to the east. To Torag, which is to the west. And then Varak, which is to the north a little bit. Now, Varak could maybe be swapped out and done a little earlier than Guthan and Torag because it is a little bit harder because you have to eat sometimes because it does hit through the prayer. Now, moving on to more of the uh, tactics and such. So, Barrows does actually have a prayer drain and any time you're inside of a crypt or in the tunnels, you'll be drained for this uh, amount. So, the actual uh, calculation to work out how much you'll be drained is 8 plus X equals Y every 10 seconds. Now, this is pretty easy to... Um, work out here so eight is the base rate so you'll always be drained eight if you haven't killed any brothers then so you got base rate plus brothers slain so if you kill two brothers you'll be eight plus two so you have ten and that's uh every you'll be ten every ten seconds so yeah pretty much so eight plus say you killed uh, five brothers you'll be uh, drained 13 prayer points every 10 seconds so it does get uh really hefty when you get to the the latter end of the brothers i guess so that's why you want to uh work out which brothers you're going to do uh first and you want to kill the I guess try to kill them as fast as you can. Now, currently, you can actually uh, take your prayer down to zero. So, say you have five prayer points left and then the uh, the prayer drain hits you. It'll take you to zero. Then you drink your prayer potion. Anyway, it'll take you up to whatever your 
prayer potion heals you for and um you won't your prayer will still stay on if you're really quick as soon as the prayer drone hits you when you're on zero prayer your prayer won't drop there's a little bit of lag there so just keep that into uh keep that in consideration at the moment now moving on to the common setups so the first one i'd suggest to use would be the uh mainstream magic setup now that is using just the normal spells so the uh bolt spells the blast spells and the wave spells now these are pretty simple you just use the Spell the guess with auto cast on, and uh, they're still pr pretty effective. Now you want to use the the best cost effective, I guess, and but you still want to have the um, the speed. So you don't want to use the chaos bolt ones if they're going to cost you heaps in prayer potion. It takes you forever to uh, kill the brothers. So try to work out what's the the best for your level. The next method is the magic dart method or the uh, slayer dart. Some people call it. This method is quite good because you uh, hate quite well if you're wearing armor. So it is um it's it's good it's quite cheap it's just one death and four mind runes so it's uh, another unlike what i was saying earlier you want to use the cheapest method possible the next method is the freeze and freeze and siphon so this is with ancient magics you will uh, freeze the brother with an ice spell and then you use the uh, blood spells to heal yourself back up if the brother's been hitting you this is a bit risky and especially if you're doing darox darox can one hit you if it gets a hit on you so it, it is quite expensive also the next method is the freeze and salamander method. Now, I haven't seen many people using this, but it is a uh, method from back in the day. You pretty much just freeze the brother and then you run away and use a, a salamander, say a black salamander would be your best one. And uh, you should, it hits quite accurate, so I'll be keen to get that method going when I uh, when the, the TARS and like the ammo uh, gets more accessible. And the last method I'd probably suggest would be mage tanking. If you've got a high defense and you're really on the ball and want to watch what you're doing, you can uh, wear armor and then use a, use a staff or whatever you're using to uh, use magic. So say you're wearing full Guthans, you want to use a Slayer Dart or Claws of Guthics, whatever you're using. And um, you you should hit through much most of the, uh, the melee brothers. You'll still hit through them because they have pretty much like negative 50 magic defense. It's quite crazy. So you can tank some of the brothers, but I wouldn't recommend it. Now, all of these methods, except for the fourth method, use range on Arams and Mage on everything else. So just keep that in mind when you're, I guess, assessing which method you're going to use. So now moving on to the invents and gear setups. So as you can see here, this is my current method I'm using. And this is, as stated at the bottom, this is only just to get you started. This will probably only get you one, maybe two brothers cures if you've only just started and you have lower stats. Now, as you can see in my invent, I use lobbies. Just you want to use lobbies or anything up from that. It's pretty much your your base to start at, and you need to use prayer potions. Pretty much, that's your you need to use them. So you have your runes at the bottom, and I use extra fire from the ghost of hoy quest to tell back to the ecto fungus to bank. Now you need a spade and the red d hard with the mage shopper. That's obviously for ranging, and the uh, the rune with the dragon skimmy. That is pretty much so I can use that while I'm in the tunnels and getting my kill count. Now I have a few options on the gear you use. As you can see here, I'm using the uh, the god robe, so I do have a little bit of uh, prayer bonus, but people might say that the uh, prayer bonus isn't good just because you have the, the massive prayer drain effects. But I don't know, it is helpful. Sometimes you might be better using the, uh, the magical bonuses, sometimes you're better using these. It is all personal preference, so I could actually be using full rune because I can pretty much hit through that with slide dart, but of course that probably wouldn't be advised. But keep in mind, this is the base, uh, the base setup, so you can pretty much use whatever you want. So... Please don't be uh, say, oh, I have to use this stuff. Just, yeah, use whatever you think's best. As for one defense pures, monk robes can be used quite effectively. Now I'm going to move on to all the brothers and their special effects and little notes I've made. So for Darok the Wretched, his special effect is that he hits higher with lower HP that he has. So <laughs> on that being said, he can hit over 50, which is uh, quite crazy. So I have been actually one hit before and a lot of people actually out in the Darok tomb just picking up people's stuff as they die. So magic is the most effective against Darok and never risk it. Keep your prayer points high so you know you won't let it drop and it'll hit you a, a 50 and KO you. The next brother I'd like to talk about is Aram the Blighted. Now his special is that he drains attack, strength and defense levels. And he's pretty easy and he's weak to range but you can uh, melee. So you can not DDS spec him out if you have high stats. But range is usually more effective so I'd, I'd stick to that if I was you. Carol's is the next brother and his special effect is that he drains agility levels. So that is that does get quite annoying because you do want to keep your, uh, your run up to make the trips as quick as possible. But, you know, it is pretty easy. Uh, he's weak to magic, but you can melee him if you have quite high stats. He does attack very, very fast, so keep your prayer up at all times. The next brother is Guthan the Infested. Now his special is that he heals for the damage inflicted. So say he hits a 20 and his special activates, he'll heal himself for a 20. The good thing is that his special does not actually hit through prayers, so he pretty much nullifies everything there. He is weak to magic, so that it does destroy him pretty easily and he's, yeah, 
pretty much relatively easy. If your operators get turned off, you usually just spec straight away for the first couple of hits. I'm not sure why, but it does get really annoying and he does hit really high. Tori the Corrupted is the next brother and his special is that he drains run energy on hit. Now this can get really annoying because you do actually need energy to run around everywhere. Uh, the notes that he has is, is weak to magic and uh, yeah, he is relatively easy. He has, uh, I think he actually does have higher defensive stats. So if you are going to melee him, which I'm not sure why you would, but I guess if you're higher stats, he can tank out quite a lot of hits. The last brother is Varak the Defiled. Now his special is that he hits through prayer and armor and this does hurt quite a bit. He can actually hit 15 through prayer and I believe it does actually hit through all of your armor when it hits through the prayer. Some people believe that it only hits through one. So if you've got prayer on, it just hits through that and hits through your armor. But I'm, I'm pretty sure it does actually hit through your prayer and your armor and just hits on like you're wearing nothing and then just goes basically off your defense level. He's weak to magic, so, you know, you should be magicing him. And make sure you keep an eye on your HP because he does hit his uh, special through your prayer quite often. Now, the last thing I need to show you all is the tunnels. Now, one of the brothers you find, you won't be able to pull him out of the crypts once you click on the crypt. Now, you ask if you want to go down. So when you go down, you will appear at a ladder. Now, on this diagram as seen here, the, uh, the blue dot is where you would appear to the ladder you appeared. Now, all of the green little lines through the, um, their little doors and the, that you can go through, the red ones are doors that you can't go through. Now, you have usually have one option on the way when you go in and you go through that. So as you can see there on the pink line that I go through the one option north, go all the way north and keep walking towards the middle so you can get to the chest. Now, the, the door that goes into the chest room, I have a puzzle, which is on the next slide. You actually have to use that. The black dots on the, on the map, are the, are the options that you could use as safe spot. So it is actually where the ladders would be if that was your ladder, but you can't actually see it because you know you can't see it. Uh, when you're finished in the tunnels, you can either run out or teleport out, but you usually only do the tunnels once you've done the other five brothers. Any unslain brothers can spawn at any door, but if there is any left at the chest, one of them will spawn at the chest, 100% sure. 12 to 14 kill count is optimal for items as confirmed in a Jmod post. If you want to search that up, you could find that on the forums, but I'm not going to go through to find that. Uh, to get the other kill count, you should have six from killing the brothers or five if you haven't uh, found it yet. And you can just kill anything in the tunnels. The bloodworms or the rats are usually the easiest to kill if you're having trouble with that. That's why I bring the dragon scimitar and the rune as I'm going through the tunnels so I can kill them with some decent armor on. These are the puzzles that you could get when you open the door to the chest room. Try to memorize all of these because you don't really actually work it out each time and you really need a time with when the monsters hit you. Now you could kill the monster and then do the puzzle but most likely another monster will hit you. So click it just as the monster is about to hit you and then uh, try to click the right one. If you do click the wrong one, the, all of the doors will move and you have to find the chest room again and also the ladder will move. That concludes the guide for all of the I don't know, info, I guess. And now I'm going to show you all a, a full run, including the chest. So I'm sure I'm going to get a Guthan Spear on this. So uh, make sure you stick around to watch this. But other than that, if you enjoyed, please subscribe because I will be putting a, a lot more guides out. I'll probably update this, uh, I guess, if it needs updating. And yeah, have a good one, guys. Bye.